<laughs> bro, I hate procrastination, bro. I've been procrastinating this video for like two whole weeks and it's just like, like damn, like, I think it's been three weeks since I've uploaded like an actual video. Like I uploaded one, I was just kind of talking to you guys, but here it goes. It's not gonna be perfect, but I just wanna get it out there. I wanna stop fucking procrastinating because I hate it so much. But this video is about social media and I used to be heavily addicted to social media just a couple years back. I would spend like six, seven, eight hours on my phone every single day. I would scroll TikTok first thing in the morning. Like my blinds are closed, it's dark in my room. First thing I do without even thinking is just reach for my phone to start scrolling. And no wonder I, I felt like shit. Before I would go to bed, I would literally fall asleep with my phone in my hand because I'm watching YouTube, because I'm listening to music, because I'm watching TikTok. And since then, I've significantly reduced my time on social media, thank God. I only spend around two, three, the highest days, maybe four hours on, on my phone. I didn't have TikTok for, I think, a whole year. And I only recently downloaded it back because I'm, I'm started posting on it more. I download Instagram only when I need to post something like a story or a post, whatever. Besides that, it's usually not on my phone. And I've definitely made a lot of progress from where I started, but I find myself spending so much time still just scrolling just doom scrolling, just numbing my brain on social media. Sometimes I won't delete Insta after I use it and I'll find myself literally like on the toilet or just in my bed just scrolling on reels. Like I even procrastinated making this video because I was on TikTok for like 30 or 40 minutes. And I always felt bad that I was spending so much time on social media and on my phone, but I wasn't too worried until I found out the dark truth about these social media companies. And I realized that the average person spend 26 years of their life staring at a screen. You might think social media is free, but it's not. Because you might not pay for it with your money, but you pay for it with your time. I'm blogging you, blogging me, blogging you. I'm blogging you, blogging me, blogging you. Get your window tint, bruh. God damn. Hey, go back, go back, go back. Go back. Anyways, how. YouTubers? No, we're just vlogging, bro. Oh. We're like kind of small YouTubers. Yeah, small. Got like 50,000 followers. 50,000? Oh, damn, boy. What's your YouTube, bro? Send me and Bader. Check it out. We're like Bader. 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 What's up, bro? This is Christian from the future, and I'm editing the video right now. But basically, most of this video is edited, but some of it is quite raw and unedited and unfiltered. And I understand that might be hard to sit through because, you know, it's not like things on the screen and transitions. But I promise you, this video will help you, it will change your life. And if you can't sit through this 12, 13 minute looking like video, then you are probably suffering from one of the side effects of social media that I bring up in the video. So please for your own good i'm not doing it for me i'm not doing it for the algorithm like i don't make a cent from this channel yet so please just take my word for it watch to the end and i'll see you there all right so i was sick two weeks ago i had like a cold i just didn't really feel well so i spent most of the weekend just sitting on the couch watching youtube and between my like sidemen and beta squad and other random videos i saw this video and it it, it struck me it was the title exact same as this one almost that social media is not free. 
And in this video, there was this graph that I have up on screen right now, showing an 18 year old's remaining time in months. And that's assuming they live to 90 years old. So all the purple dots is the time spent sleeping. All the green dots is all the time spent at work or at school. All the orange dots are the time spent driving. All the red dots are the time spent cooking and eating. All the yellow dots are the time spent doing chores and running errands. The blue dots are spent in the bathroom and hygiene. And then all of those empty dots down represent your free time. And our free time is the best and most valuable time of our lives. What we choose to do in our free time determines our quality of life, our friendships, our relationships, the number in our bank account, um, our mind, our, our physique, everything. Our free time is what determines our life. Also, free time is the time you're gonna spend going on dates and traveling the world and raising your kids. Our free time is the time where we have fun and make memories. And also our free time is the time where we make our mark and leave our impact on the world and the people around us. Now what we're looking at is the same exact graph, except all of those filled in black dots represent all of the time that an average 18 year old will go on to spend looking at a screen throughout the rest of their life. Add it up all together, that's 26 years. Imagine throughout our lives spending 26 full years staring at a screen. That's 26 winters, 26 summers, 26 Christmases, 26 birthdays, all spent looking at a screen. Do you want your life to look like this? For me, that's a no, because this scares the shit out of me. 26 years of my life spent looking at a screen. And you would probably say no, and most people would probably say no as well. No one is like, oh yes, I wanna spend 26 years of my life looking at a screen, like no. But yet the average person our age spends over seven hours a day on their phone alone. So why is this? Why do people spend so much time looking at a screen and on social media even though they don't want to? Why do I do this? Why do you do this? Why did I used to spend seven hours a day on my phone and why do I still spend two, three, four hours a day on my phone? Well, the thing is it isn't entirely our own fault. Technically, it is our choice to open up TikTok or Instagram, but only because we've been conditioned to do so by these evil companies. Meta, the company that owns Instagram. ByteDance, the company that owns TikTok. Google, YouTube, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, Facebook, everything. These are all huge multi-billion dollar international organizations fighting for one thing, your time. Social media, it might be free. It might be free to use and free to download, but it isn't free because you are the product. Your time is the commodity. These companies, they don't care about us. They just want us to spend as much time as physically possible on their platforms. And this is so that they can find out about our interests. Like, have you ever been thinking about something or talking about something? And then you see that thing on your TikTok for you page. Do you think this is a coincidence? These algorithms, these data sets, they find out all the minute details about you and your interests so that they can show you ads specifically tailored to you and to me so that they can make money. You spending just a minute longer every day is worth millions of dollars to them over the years. So they will optimize every pixel of their app to make it as addictive as possible. And I might sound crazy, you might be like, oh, what is this guy talking about? Talking about evil companies, like it's just TikTok, it's just Instagram. And I would have said the same thing until I really found out the dark truth about like all of these platforms that control and manipulate our attention. Think about when you open Instagram and that red icon pops up from the heart. They have tested and tested that exact shade of red to get you to click on that heart like a little monkey without even thinking. And I'm saying this because I do it too. When I download Instagram and I open it and I see that red icon on the heart, I click that heart without even consciously thinking about it. Like I've been conditioned to do so. And what shocked me the most when I was researching this video is that these companies, they use the same tactic as gambling to get you addicted to their platforms. Let me explain. These algorithms work in what's called a random intermittent reward schedule. And this just means that after the algorithm has collected enough data about you, okay, you've spent uh, this much time watching this video, okay, you've liked this video, okay, you favorited this video, you commented this, whatever. They get a good um idea of what type of video will be like a 10 out of 10, the most appealing, the most triggering. You will watch till the end, you will engage with it. They know what videos that you will like watching. So they will purposely show you one of these like 10 out of 10 appealing videos for you. And then they'll purposely show you some four out of 10 or six out of 10 videos. 
and then boom, another 10 out of 10 video. And this process, this cycle, it happens randomly. So it could be in the next five scrolls that you get another 10 out of 10 video, it could be in the next uh, 15, it could be the next scroll, it could be the next 30 scrolls. But the point is you don't know when the next 10 out of 10 video is coming up. So you will keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. And then you find it, okay, great, a 10 out of 10 video, but then you keep scrolling, oh, I wanna see another one. You keep scrolling, you keep scrolling. Another 10 out of 10, you keep scrolling. It's like, it's like a trap, it's like a cycle. And whether you're aware of it or not, this is how your brain works when you're on these platforms. And this is highly, highly addictive. And this is the same exact reward system used in gambling, where jackpots happen randomly. You don't know how many times you're gonna have to pull the lever and get a triple seven or you don't know when it's gonna land on red or black. I don't know, I've never been gambling, obviously, I'm just kinda, but the point is you don't know when the jackpot's gonna happen, it happens randomly. And this is so, so triggering, so addictive for your brain, because your brain's like, oh, what if it happens now? What if I uh, buy this lottery ticket and then it happens, but then you keep buying it and then, oh, okay, and then you get a little um, jackpot, but then you spend that jackpot buying more lottery tickets or going back to the casino. And this is why people gamble their life savings away. This is why social media is so addictive. We all know that feeling when you're scrolling and you get to that point where you're like, this isn't even fun, like, why am I doing this? But you literally can't stop because of how your brain has been rewired by these companies purposely. And this isn't an accident, this random intermittent reward schedule. These companies, they hire people called attention engineers and their whole job is to employ tactics like this to get you as addicted as possible. Because like I said, the, the more time you watch, the more um, ads they can show you, the more money they make. Like I literally remember so many times where I'll be in bed at, at 10 p.m. Uh, I had a, a, a good day, I was productive, I got work done. I'm on my phone about to set my alarm. I set it, I, I get off the app, and then I see TikTok on my homepage. I'm like, oh, it wouldn't hurt to just, you know, check TikTok real quick. It's midnight, it's 1 p.m. I finally use all of my willpower and, and close out the app and end my doom scroll. And I'm like, why did I just do that? I just wasted so much time. But besides purely just wasting your time, which is a huge, huge negative with these platforms, there's so many other negatives associated with social media and with, with high screen time. High screen time and high social media use is shown to make people more anxious and depressed. Part of this is due to the comparison aspect of apps, especially like Instagram. Your brain cannot handle comparing itself to billions and billions of other people. Like when you're scrolling on Instagram, you're on your explore page or homepage, or whatever, or you're on reels, and you see like this really jacked, shredded guy, you're like, shit, like I look like shit compared to this guy. And your brain literally can't handle doing that because when you're on Instagram, you're comparing yourself, it's you comparing yourself to, I think it's like one billion or two billion people that use Instagram. And your brain literally can't fathom, it can't handle this, this amount of comparison. Our ancestors, they used to live in tribes of around 150 people. So over time, our brain got used to comparing ourselves and finding our standing in our group of this 150 people. Like the best example is your physique. If you've been going to the gym for six months, for a year, for a year and a half, and you look around at the people in your neighborhood, in your uh, city, the people around your age that you know, you're probably like, okay, well, like, compared to them, I have a pretty good physique, you know, like, some of them might be more jacked than you, but then some of them are skinnier, some of them are fatter, whatever, but as soon as you open Instagram and you see guys the same exact age as you, if not younger than you, with physiques that are way better than you, you're like, shit, like, my physique sucks, but the worst part about social media isn't just the fact they're a waste of time, it isn't depression, it isn't mental health issues, social media, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, all of this, this overstimulation, it's shortening your attention span and making you chronically distracted. No one can focus nowadays, literally no one, unless you've deliberately taken time away from these platforms and trained your focus. And again, this isn't our fault. Take something like scrolling on TikTok, for example, where people on average don't even spend five seconds on one TikTok before scrolling to the next. We are literally training our brains to be like little monkeys switching between dopamine source and dopamine source every 
few seconds. Constantly switching between stimulus and stimulus like this, it literally rewires our neural pathways in our brain, makes us less capable of focusing our attention on one single thing. And all good things in life require focus of some form or another. Having high quality relationships and friendships is really hard when you can't even focus on what the other person is saying without thinking about, oh, what you're gonna eat for, for dinner tonight, or without thinking about this uh, thing that you saw, whatever, without your mind switching to something different. Building a business is insanely hard if you can't sit down and do the work and focus. And I've struggled with this problem for a long, long time. And it's taken me a very, very long time to make even a little bit of progress towards training my focus because of all this overstimulation I, that I was like frying into my brain since I was very young. So I hope that I've made you realize that social media is making your life significantly worse because I realized this especially after researching and scripting and, and making this video. And the next logical step is to reduce your time spent on social media, or even better, to quit it entirely. And although I've significantly reduced the amount of time that I spend on social media, like I said in the beginning of the video, I still find myself wasting way too much time than I want to on these platforms. So for the next two weeks, I'm gonna be trying this social media, like. I guess detox protocol, if you wanna call it. And if it works for me, if it's successful, I'll be sharing my results and I'll be sharing the protocol with you guys. And before the end of the video, I have one more thing to mention. This whole video, I've been demonizing social media and pointing out all of the negatives associated with it. But the truth is there is one giant positive with social media. But this video is getting a little too long, so I'll discuss that in next week's video. If this video improves your life in any way, then please subscribe. And subscribe especially if you don't want to miss the next two videos in this three-part social media series. Alright bro, that's the end of the video. And as always, I'm rooting for you.